then you see that it uh, reduces the proportion of glucose. The evidence for this is that more the glucose, more the ocular pressure, more the proportion of the glucose. Less is the ocular pressure, less is the proportion of glucose. Okay? More for prolonged period of the ocular pressure is raised. More is the proportion of glucose. So the duration, duration, acute drive, disease, they all find that intraocular pressure is a very important body for you. So we have the reason intraocular pressure. That is the current body. That is the current body. Other things are very poorly understood. That how we can decrease the ankle resistance, how we can do the protection. So those 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 are very poor. So that we don't have that. We don't have the exact mechanism in room. So we cannot do an exact treatment. Current means of status. Current means of status. So status I have told you, it will be done. So one of the important things is what is the diagonal variation of it? Anybody can tell me? Anybody can tell me what is the diagonal variation of IOP? Just put it in the lower bodies. 
with the lowest bodies. So patients should know what is the PPE put, you speak to what. Then he should put like this, and he should know that it is drop all the lower bodies. Okay? And the dose should not touch the lips. If, if it touches the lips, what will happen? It will cause contamination. If I will say infected, it will cause infection. So you have to tell all these things to these patients. So first is the how to put the eye drop. Then number seven is the contamination problem. Number third is the compliance to drug therapy. What's compliance? Well, so if the patient is putting the drop or not, because suppose these are some drug sort, they are to be put free casually. Some drop more casually. So more the number of time they are to, to be put, more is the pocket full of situation. Okay? That's the other issue. Other issue is the dimension. These are energy. They are energy pieces. They fall with the body. Again, they will fall into the progress. Glaucoma will progress. Then other issue is the side effects of the drugs. Somebody is getting dead risk. Somebody is getting dead risk in the eye. Somebody is getting a glucose pulse. Somebody is getting a heart rate of the so these are some of the side effects which can uh, come the step by the way to stop the drug. Suppose you put the eye drop, it gets immediately dead. In that way, I, I will not put the drug. These are the side effects related to all of them. I don't know if this is one of the most important things I know. You have to do a counter of You have to do a counter of You have to press it. You have put the drop, then you have pressed it lazily in the near the lower bone. What? Yes. So that the drug does not enter the NLD. So that the drug does not enter the nasal abdomen. And why? What will happen to that? So if you go to the NLD, then you will be absorbed as nasal because it will go to the system of circulation. And it will have the system of side effects. Okay? It will have systemic side effects. It will have this is so the long term for that point. So these were some of the basic things we can explain to you and the issues with the global medication. Other issues, other issues are costly. These glaucoma medications are very costly. They are, they are very costly. Maybe some of the patients do not afford this medication. Behind the eyes, 
comes in front of the glucose and then gets the glow here. One more thing before I start with the glow cell, that will take 10 to 15 minutes more than you have to So you'll be at ease. <coughs> so what was important is the flow of X. What is the conventional and non-conventional flow? 90% of the atoms is drained to the end. That's for the conventional. And 6 to 7 percent is in the UV signal. Okay? What's UV signal? That means the, it is getting the aqueous is getting here, it is go, going across the cereal body and it is going to the supraprovided space. This is called UV signal. This one? This is only 6 percent. How much? 6 percent. Any other there's any other flow? No? Ah, yes, there is one person. There is one person. To what? To what? That to the highest. That to the highest blood vessels. That is to the highest blood vessels. Okay. Now this is the red is showing you. That is due to drugs. Due to rheumatoid drugs. So drugs are like rheumatoid drugs are classified like this. Roxanthine, beta blockers, alpha 2 agonists, small molecular heterogeneous inhibitors, hyperphosphorus, rhomatide inhibitors, and neurofibrillators. This is the classification. So roxanthine is the number one. They are the number one. They are the, if I have to give a medal, I will give them a gold medal. Okay? So gold medal goes to Scotia. They are the number one type in the present day world. So there are three types. There are three types. The names of the drugs are Latino cross, Metal cross, and Chow cross. What are prostaglandins? We know. They are inflammatory mediators. They are inflammatory mediators. They are inflammatory mediators. So the mechanism of action, how they act, how they act, they increase the UV signal output. They are basically local hormone like, local hormone, they increase the UV signal. From the CDD body, they go to, uh, across the CDD body to the supraprovided space. Normally, I told you, the UV signal flows at a lot, 6%. So that gets increased to 30%. UV signal outflow gets increased to 30 percent by the prostaglandins. So they are the products of alexidonic acid. They are the products of the alexidonic acid, which will be the cyclo oxygen and third. So they lower the IOP by the UV signal outflow and the relaxation of the ciliary muscle. Relaxation of the ciliary muscle and the extra cellular matrix which is in the ciliary body. Yeah, that means that they create gaps in the ciliary body. They create gaps in the ciliary body. And the aqueous go through the ciliary body through the suprachoroidal space directly. So this is the mechanism of their action. They increase what? Universal outflow. They increase the universal outflow. Okay? 
So this is the concentration only thing is put the extra zero here. Zero zero five. Don't write this point zero five. Only one two digit divide of one. Only zero three. Then the side effects of these drugs. Side effects of these drugs. Side effects of these drugs. The side effects of these drugs are very disturbing. Since they are inflamed to the main mediators, what they are called? Hyperemia. They will cause hyperemia in the eye. That is the most common side effect. Hyperemia is the number one side effect of this prostaglandin. And that too more with the bimatoprost. That too more with the bimatoprost. What are the side, other side effects? They cause hyperpigmentation. They cause hyperpigmentation because they increase the tyrosine kinase activity. They increase the melanin. They increase the melanin. So on the iris they have an effect. On the iris they have an effect. They cause hyperpigmented eyes. They cause hyperpigmented eyes. On the lashes they have an effect. They cause the long eyelashes. What's called? Hypertrichosis. That's called hypertrichosis. So hyperemia, then the hyperpigmentation and hypertrichosis. And hypertrichosis, these are the three, these are the three important side effects of these drugs. Then there is one more very broad term nowadays that's called Prostaglandin acetated pain orbital pad, PAP. PAP. Prostaglandin acetated pain orbital pad. What is that? Because they have a negative effect on the fats. They have a negative effect on the fats. They decrease the fats in the body. They decrease the fats in the body. So, once they decrease the fats in the body, what will happen? The globe will look something. Sunken glow. There will be a sunken glow. What's all called anophthalmos? What's called anophthalmos? And what is the anophthalmos will happen? The superior surface will rise up. So, or deep. Deep superior surface. Deep superior surface. One more thing will happen that they will be some process. They will come down. Okay? So, something below, then the recession or deepening of the superior surface, then the torsos. Then one more thing is that there will be hyperpigmented leaf. Hyperpigmented leaf. I told you because of the tyrosine kinase activity. Hyperpigmented leaf. Hyperpigmentation of the leaves. So, this is a problem. Suppose a young girl, she is putting lavender cross for two years. And she gets the hyperpigmented lip here. She used to be married. She is telling why I bought this. So in unilateral glaucoma, one has to be very careful with the closure there. Suppose somebody gets hyperpigmentation on both sides, it may be accepted. But one hyperpigmented are the normal. It is unacceptable. So this is the problem. In unilateral glaucoma, most of the people restrict closure there in view. So this is called I this symptom complex is called the periorbital pathy. Prostaglandin acetated periorbital pathy. There is one more uh, effect of this that sometimes when people drink it, they can get a click. They get a click. That's what noise. So they blink and they get a noise. There is some higher in the lips and which is trapped here. And once they blink, it causes a noise in the long term. It is more again with the dimetoprost. And number second is the trevoprost, then latinoprost. In the dimetoprost, almost 90% of the people they need to talk to you. So this is an audible clip. This is an audible clip. So any other effect, yes, they will effect of the iris. They can cause some type of iris cysts. They can cause iris cysts. Any other effect of the iris? Yes. Because they are integrated mediators. They are integrated mediators. What they can cause? They can boost the vitreous. They can boost the vitreous. They can cause macular edema. 
what's called CMP, cystoid macular edema. So they can go across the uterus and they can cause cystoid macular edema. So that's all that is the outside. So the next one to know where it should be given, where it should not be given. What should be the precaution? So precaution is clear to Most important is it cannot be given in UIs because it's integrated in So UIs do. Okay? The most important may be unilateral glaucoma also low. But some people will give. That's plus minus. And third important is macular edema. Macular edema, especially post surgical. Suppose somebody has done a cataract surgery, he cannot put a prostate gland in his body. At least for three months. At least for three months. Because there is already inflammation in the eye. Or somebody has a diabetic macular edema, or some other macular edema, you cannot give these things. So, two precautions. Two and macular edema. The system side effects are not concerned. So now next class is beta blocker. So if I have to give them, I will give a silver medal to them. Okay? So silver medal is for this. They are good. They are good. But they are not better than prostate cancer. But they are cheaper. They are cheaper. For financially less people, those who have less finance, you can prescribe these drugs. Okay? The most important drug is the Timolog. Most important drug is the Timolog. Then there are other metoprotonol, bidoxlor, levoprotonol. Bidoxlor is the beta 1 selective. They are not specific, beta 1, beta 2. The most important drug we use is Timolog. You can remember only one drug, that's the Timolog. And this concentration is 0.5%. This concentration is 0.5%. Person, and it is to be used to be modulated. Modulated? I forgot to tell you about, I will go back again to the again to prostaglandin. Prostaglandin comes from at what time? The bad time. They are good at bad time. In, in some hypothesis, it is 9 p.m. It's right, repeat, 9 p.m. It's written 9 p.m. What is it? 9 p.m. So there it is at night or evening. Why? Because the peak of the IOD of course is the world. Okay, so they act after 12 hours. You can give during the day also, but that's the reason why they are doing the peak. Because peak of the world is at morning. So now I go to beta blockers. Beta blockers are the cheaper class of drugs. The Number one is Timolol. There are other drugs which are not available in India. Suppose Levobinol or Metoprenolol. They are used in the West. They are used in the West, but they are not. And we don't know the beta ones left. So they lower the IOP by decreasing the aqueous production by the beta stimulation. Okay? So they decrease the aqueous production. Same. They decrease the aqueous production. Once aqueous is less produced, it will decrease the IOD. I told you 0.5% BD. Okay? Then,
So they can, they can suppose these are preservatives. They have preservatives, the drugs have preservatives. They have effect on the goblet cell. You understand? That is the way they, they cause right? Not by any other means. Because they have preservative So dry is a very important side effect of the drug. So some people have lubricants uh, with the beta blockers. And the other things of powder erosion or dryness, that is that um, that is a possibility also. So but most important the systemic side effects. Okay? Because what you are putting them in the eye, they go through the general abnormal they get absorbed to the it's okay to call you from the pharynx or whatever, from the nose, they get to systemic absorption. Uh, it is uh, presumed that uh, the drops we put in the eye is equal to 20 milligram of beta or equivalent to 20 milligram of oral beta block. Suppose we give oral image beta block.
So this, this is all about the Peter Blocker. So if you somebody cannot afford a proper glandular in law, that's a really high cost therapy, lazy. So you can give a beta blocker. The dose is given on 0.5% BD. Side effects are the dose. So other drugs are better is alpha agonists. Yeah? Alpha? So I will give a silver medicine today. No, not silver bronze. I will give a bronze medicine. Because they are only add-on therapy. They are add-on. They are not first line therapies. They are not or they are used in uh, the acute situation where you need it to have a good form. So we have two colors of drugs. Two drugs are there. One is atracomonidine, other is rhymonidine. They are alpha 2 agonists. So the mechanism of action is they decrease again the aqueous production. It is effective. Uh, it is a low cost, cheap therapy. 
it costs 30 rupees. How much? 30 rupees for the judge. But you know the mechanism of this. It is an anti-cooling stress inhibitor. Okay? So it will have a parasympathetic mimetic effect. It will have a parasympathetic mimetic effect. So it's a very cheap drug. It can be used as an alternative in poor patients to control the IOP. Normally, how much the IOP decreases with prostaglandin or beta blockers? It's 30%. It is? With this, it's 20%. You understand? With this, it is 20 years. And it is more important, the most important, that it is safe in pregnancy, especially in third trimester. So, pregnancy, you can give. And in first or second trimester, you can give priority. You can give priority. And in third trimester, you can give biological. Mm -hmm. Rest of the other drugs are unsafe in pregnancy. One more thing about the primordial diet about uh, the precaution when it should not be used. When it should not be used primordial diet. Alpha 2 agents. It should not be used in children. There is a safety. You understand? Why? Huh? So it causes the blood in Yes, it causes the blood in the brain So it can have same side effects. So less than six years ago, so pyrocarpin, I told you that pyrocarpin is a the concentration we use generally pyrocarpin is two percent. How much? Two percent. And what is the dosage? Three times the TID. Okay? So two percent for TID dosage. <coughs> it's a very important term, very cheap. It can be used in a very financially uh, poor vision. One more important thing is about this. the only problem is this is a side effects. It is with some very serious side effects. It is some very serious. Why? Why it is called very serious side effects? Because it causes the ciliary muscle spasm. It causes the ciliary muscle spasm. So it causes headache in young patients. It causes headache in young because of the spasm. And once the ciliary muscle spasm is open, what will happen? It will cause a myopia. It will cause a myopia. Why? Why it will cause a myopia? Because the lens thickness will increase. Okay? Lens thickness will increase. Because once it comes, till it must come forward, the tight general will become relaxed. The tight general will become relaxed. Lens thickness will increase. Once lens thickness will increase, Raise the curve for the head of the retina and it was a myopia. So they have a different obscuration once they will be walking. So in young patients, you cannot give back. It was a headache, it was a myopia. Okay? So they are they will not be able to see properly. That is a very important restriction to pyrocarbon. Other important restriction to pyrocarbon is it can cause a Orbicular muscle spasm, everything in the lips. Okay? That is not that important. The most important thing is it cannot be given in high myopia. It cannot be given in high myopia. Because once there will be a muscle spasm, it will put a traction on the painful retina. If there is a high myopia, there are painful moves or uh, degeneration, lags, cold, or whatever. It can pull on them and you can get the retinal detachment. You can get a retinal detachment. So restriction is in two young patients which can get a high rate of myopia and the high myopia patients will take a hard retinal detachment. So in these two class of patients you cannot do. Third, no means you eyes. Because it causes again inflammation. It causes so two class of drugs should not be given in UIs. One is prostaglandin, other is pylocorn. So these two are contraindicated. Prostaglandins and pyrocarpins. They should not be used at all. So pyrocarpin, uites, then the myopia, it can go in the young, then the retinal, uh, retinal pool, retinal detachment in high myopes. And in cataract patients, so somebody has a cataract, cataract and you give pyrocarpin. Suppose the same cataract. 
Once it will pull the pupil down, they will decrease the vision. So in central cataract, it's not What is the mechanism of action of pyrophobia? How it acts? So if you pull on the iris, it will have mechanical effect. It will have a like an angle to open up. Because it will pull the iris towards the center. Okay? So the angle will open up, the range will be good. And other mechanism is very important, it will pull the signal of super. Because the signal of super is behind. Signal of super is behind. Once it will pull the signal of super posteriorly and internally. Posteriorly and internally. What will happen? The trabecular vessel gets open. Driving pure vessel will get open, even the slums can also get opened up. So there will be more red. So it has two mechanisms of action. One mechanical, so it will pull the iris, it will constrict the pupil, that will open up the angle mechanically. Now but second is it will pull the signal super posteriorly and internally, that will open up the spaces in the trabecular vessel and in the shilamus canal. That will increase the drainage. And even the third mechanism is also related to all the presumed to be a cause agonist. It is not uh, uh, presumed to be only agonist. Cause agonist. It does not cause total spasm. It causes moderate spasm. It, it opens some spaces in the what? In the ciliary body and that can increase the uv signal outflow. That is the third mechanism. So it has three mechanisms. One is the mechanical through the angle. Second is the signal super pull which posteriorly and internally, that will increase the, that will open up the trabecular measurement species and cinnamon canal and third is the, it can uh, increase the space in the ciliary body which can increase the uv signal outflow, especially if it is given with the prostaglandins. So the IOP reduction is over here. Next. So the increase glycine has to be given. It has to be given in the angle closure. It has to be given in angle closure glaucoma. That's the number one. That's the number one. It can be given in trapping open angle also. Okay? It can be given in open angle. That also decreases the angle. Okay? Then the third is the plateau eyes. Where there is a plateau in the eyes in the benefit, it will pull it, it will straighten it. <coughs> that is other indication for this. It can be given in pseudo exposition. It can be given in pigmentation. Why is single exploration pigmented? Have you heard about single exploration glaucoma? Yes, there is some material which is uh, shattered by the lens epithelium, anterior lens epithelium, or the anterior capsule, and it will block the capsule vessel. Once there is more movement of the eyes, you will come to switch dilates, it will release more that material. Zero exploration material. Once it will be static pupil, small pupil, it will not drop. Okay? So it has a zero exploration global. There is one more pigmentary global. What is the pathogenesis in pigmentary global? There is on the eyes, pigments. How the how it how it releases the pigment? With rubbing with that. Like that. Rubbing with what? Zero sometimes. Uh, yes, you are right, but how? Basically, there is a concavity posteriorly. There is a concavity of eyes posteriorly. Eyes dip here like this. And once it comes in contact with the zone, it releases. Suppose this eyes is now constricted. Okay? This concavity will go. There will be no pigment dispersion. So it helps in pigmented dispersion glaucoma as well. Next. Systemic size effects. We will read it to ourselves. So, contraindication I told you. Central cataract, okay, the UIs, the high myopia, the IIs, and the young patients. So, in these patients, in these class of group of patients, it should not be given, especially young, especially high myopia, especially UIs. So, no to these two. UIs, high myo, and young patients. And which other drugs should not be given in UIs? Prostaglandins. Yes. So, we have now a lot of drugs like small one and everything in It has three drugs. Estrozolomide, Brinzolomide, Dorzolomide. The number one drug, Estrozolomide, is what? 
that is systemic, that is systemic, that is given orally, tablet form. And the reserve money, the donor money, they are the They are the cranial pressure and this that was called tablet dimox that's the this is one group that's called sustained SR release tablet which can be a video we have one drug uh, that's called our SR that's called our SR that is estudoromide sustained release that new video twice day. they have got very serious systemic effects they have what are the serious systemic effects they have suppose you give them the patients, they will complain of abdominal pain, anorexia, then uh, then gastritis, then behavior, then vomiting, then a GA disturbance. Number one. Number two, the important side effect, they can get pastesias. They get patients get pastesias type of thing. You understand? And number two, they can get to sort of a uh, depression type, depression, CN side effects, anorexia, depression, like that, those type of effects there. And one more effect is that uh, on the renal system, they can get uh, urolithesis, stones in the kidney on the long term. What's called? Eurodegesis. That's called? Eurodegesis. So see how the very serious side effects. So it cannot be good for a prolonged time. It can be even for a short time. Some of these are mentioned here, that you can see. Uh, and one more thing is they can cause potassium depletion. They can cause potassium depletion, hypokaline. Hypokaline. So you have to give potassium with them, like cold chlor or anything like that. So that's one more metabolic system. That's the So that's how the things I told you almost. Most importantly, the GI guy told you, GI side effects, that you have to remember. Urolithesis you have to remember. Pastesia you have to remember. You should not forget. Huh? Urolithesis, depression, bumpy tears, irritability, whatever can happen, that's the other stuff, side effects. But these are the main side effects. And potassium depletion, I told you. So, elderly, you have to be careful. So, this topical drops, we have two. Topical drops, we have this was systemic, estrogenolamide. Topical, we have two. Dorzolamide, eh? Dorzolamide, and pinzolamide. Dorzolamide is usually two percent. Two percent, eight. Two percent, eight. And pinzolamide is given one percent. It is given one person drop. They have some local side effects. They have some local side effects in the eyes. 
one of the side effects is like the okay, of the broken side effects of the they can what they they can cause stickiness, hyperemia, congestion in the eye. You understand? And the most important, they can increase the coronal edema. They can increase the coronal edema. That's very important side effect. The lower level of eye should not be given in those patients in which there is coronal edema. So hyperemia, congestion, then the coronal edema. Why is it called coronal edema? Because the endothelium has two parts, sodium potassium and sodium hydrogen. They affect the sodium hydrogen part. They affect the sodium hydrogen part. So they are for coronal edema. So again, this class of drugs, dorsolomide, brinzolomide, they can be combined with the other drugs. They can be combined with the prostaglandin or with the beta blockers like that. And they can be okay. This is the difference between the dorsolomide and brinzolomide. Dorsolomide <coughs> is given three times. Brinzolomide is given two times. Brinzolomide has less local effects. Why? Because it is a neutral pH. It has a <laughs> what about the dorsolomide? It has a acidic pH. It has a acidic around 4.5 and that is around 7 pH. So brinzolomide is tolerated much better than dorsolomide. Okay? Next. Then we have the hyperosmotic agents. Then, then we have a one thing I forgot to tell you about brimonity. Alpha 2 agents. I will repeat once more. They can be given in short procedures. Why you suppose you have to do a dash, a plot to somebody or this, or you want an acute temporary decrease in IOP, in that condition primary you can be given. Even total of it can be given in the whole Okay, then hydrosomotic agents, hydrosomotic agents, manicol, glycerol, and urea, and ascorbicus. In some expansion, if I don't know what another thing. But we are not bothered, we are talking about two drugs. One is the manicol and other is the oral glycerol. When when these drugs are given? Or five to six hours. So we have to serve it for somebody. You understand? So we want to drop an IO. Or somebody has a certain increase in the IO, very high. 60, 70, we won't have drop in that. Indications I will tell you. So what are these class of drugs? They are hydrophonic. They are hydrophonic. They increase the osmotic gradient of blood. So once the blood goes into the chloride, they, it sucks the hypertonics, it sucks the water from the vitreous and from the aqueous. From both areas. From the aqueous and then from, from the vitreous. So vitreous becomes dehydrated. Which has become, mm. once there is contraction of the vitreous volume, it will decrease the IOP. But the problem with them is, once 5 6 hours will go, IOP will rebound. Once this hyperosmosis will go in the blood, it takes 6 hours and it will rebound. So, within these 6, six hours, we have to fix the problem, but not the problem. One more important side effect they have, once there is vitreous condensation or vitreous dehydration, normally the vitreous is more hydrated. It will push the iris and the diagonal all It will decrease the, it will shallow the acid. It will shallow the acid. Once the vitreous normal decreases, it will increase the acid. So uh, I am operating on a table and I see a very shallow acid due to one reason or due to other reason. If I will give manitol, acid will increase. I can operate. You understand? I can do the surgery. So they increase the AC depth by pulling the iron step diaphragm back. So the surgery becomes easy. Okay. Then the glycerol has the same effect. What is the dose of the manual? 
manitol dose is 1.2 to 1.5 grams per kg. 1.2 to 1.5 grams per kg. And what's the dose of glycerol? 0.5 to 1.5 grams per kg. If we give normally manitol comes in 20 percent solution. It comes in 20 percent solution. So you can remember 6 to 8 ml. Isn't it? 8 ml per kg of a 20 percent solution. I, I will calculate, suppose somebody is 50 kg person and we want to give manitol 20 percent. Okay? So how much dose is for 50 kg? Agar, if we calculate by 1.5, it will be 75 grams. How much? 75 grams. So in one bottle of 100 ml it is 20 grams. How much is it? 20 percent means 20 grams, not milligrams. 20 percent means 20 grams. So 20 grams in one bottle. So we have to give four bottles of water. 400 grams. If not 400 grams, 300 grams. You understand? So 350 ml in half an hour or in one hour. First, you have to give it first. You don't have to. And what about the glycerol? Same. We have to give 6 ml. Sorry, 6 teaspoon. We have to give 6 teaspoon 3, three times a day. And 1 teaspoon is how much? 5 ml. And 6 teaspoon means 30 ml. So 30 ml TAG or 4 times. 30 ml TAG or 4 times is the dose of the glycerol. Again, they have a systemic side effects. They have systemic side effects. One, uh, they need to go gastro, this is a problem again, DID and, and manitol has an effect on the heart. Somebody's heart is compromised. You understand? It can cause volume overload, it can cause heart failure. You understand? Then other problems that can increase the pulmonary edema. So lungs, somebody has a lung problem, and if it's a pulmonary edema, they can increase the pulmonary edema. And the excretion is through the renal hepatic system. So if there is a renal problem or a hepatic problem, they should be given with for They should be given with for Other somebody has an anemia. Somebody has an mm -hmm. anemia, so they will not be treated. You understand? So patients which have a severe dehydration or which have senior severe anemia, they should be given with caution. Not with caution, but they have to be avoided then. And is one more, they can cause intracranial bleed, especially subdural hematoma. That's one more. So see the four five. One is the anemia or the dehydration, heart failure, the pulmonary edema, the renal and hepatic system, and then, then the subdural hematoma. So these are the limitations of the type of the
they have three four mechanisms. They have three four mechanisms. One I told you, they act on the acting the acting They act on the acting myosin. That will open up the trabecular meshwork. Number second is they decrease the aqueous production. How? By the non epidephrine mediated decrease. Okay? Maybe what is the exact mechanism, but they decrease the aqueous production also. They increase the conventional outgrowth in the acting myosin also. And one more important is that uh, they decrease the <coughs> Epistolar venous pressure. Epistolar venous pressure. Once the epistolar venous pressure will be decreased, IOP will decrease. Okay? Because the, uh, uh, the aqueous will be drained through the angle faster. So, how, why they decrease the epistolar venous pressure? Because they are smooth muscle relaxants. They are smooth muscle relaxants. So, these are the three primary mechanisms. There are more additional mechanisms. They are considered to be neuroprotectional. Rogaine is having to be serious for this spinal cord injury. You understand? So they have neuroprotection also. That's very important. And once they release the one more mechanism of action, once they uh, relax the smooth muscle, the blood flow will increase. You understand? The ocular blood flow will increase. That is the one more mechanism in which they can affect the glucose progression. So these are the five mechanisms. One is the decrease type of production, other is the decrease, increase conventional flow, third is the epistolar venous pressure decrease, fourth is the neural protection, and fifth is the increase ocular blood flow by smooth So there are two drugs. There are one is called repositive. One is called repositive. That's the 0.4% BD. 0.4% BD. And next is netorcidin. Repositive is not available in India. It's available in Japan. The netorcidin, you remember only 0.02%. 0.02%. Netorcidin. Repositive is your BD. Netorcidin is your Video or toy? I think video. You just check it. Reporting is given in the concentration of 0 0.02 percent. 0 0.02 percent. Only remember this concentration. Then, how there are some other advantages of low kinase inhibitors. They have been, I told you, they are the smooth muscle relaxants, they increase the blood flow to the eye, so they are a neural protection. Number second mechanism, they inhibit the apoptosis. They inhibit the apoptosis because what is glaucoma? It's a ganglion cell death. Natural ganglion cell death. Apoptosis increased. Once some drug decreases the apoptosis, that will preserve the ganglion cell and the optic nerve function will be restored. You understand? So they inhibit the apoptosis of the ganglion cell. That's one more mechanism of rho kinase inhibitors. And one more mechanism is, one more mechanism is, they decrease the corneal edema. They decrease the corneal edema. Why? Because normally, normally the endothelial cells, normally the endothelial cells, they are packed close together. They are packed close together with tight interjunction. They release those interjunctions. They make them separated. Once they are separate, they can proliferate. They can, they can proliferate, so they can regenerate. So they affect the cell's shape and size. So it helps in the coronal edema. You understand? The drug which is not to be given in coronal edema, dorsolamide. Drug which can be given in coronal edema, rho kinase inhibitor. Okay? Next. Huh. One more thing I forgot to tell you is side effects of Side effects of what? The raw kinase inhibitor. What are side effects? Hmm? Raw kinase side effects are uh, they cause subconjunctural hemorrhage. They cause subconjunctural hemorrhage. And they cause hyperemia. They cause 
And most important, one important side effect they have that's called cornea versus That is cornea versus Anybody will tell me what's cornea versus later? This is a branching pattern of cornea opacities. This is a branching pattern of cornea opacities below the <coughs> optical zone. Below the optical zone, there's a branching pattern of coronal uh, opacities. That's sub epithelial. That is sub epithelial. Once you stop a drug, it goes off. What are the drugs which call? One, as I told you, rokinase inhibitor. Any idea of that pharmacology? What are the other drugs which can call? I think uh, the amiodarone, the antiarrhythmics, or chloroquine, or quinine like drugs, just cross check. Okay? Yes. But I think those class of drugs can cause cornea, which is later. And rocaine is one of the drugs which can cause cornea, which is later. Next. So, next, last drug, last drug, we need to do. Protective. I have told you some of the drugs. Primary nilatum. It's a neuro Okay? Rokinase. It's a neuro. Two class of um, they are in the investigation only. One is the NMD antagonist, which reduces the glutamate. Which reduces the glutamate. They can like mementine. Mementine even pitoxin or but these are all investigation, anti-apoptotic drugs. That's the way I can do primonidine or rokinase inhibitor. So they can inhibit the apoptosis. Next. And one more is nit nitric oxide synthase antagonist. They inhibit the nitric oxide synthase enzyme. So these are the calcium chemicals, they are by name called the chemicals. Next. Oh, now the treatment part. So a patient of Rutherum comes to me. What should I prescribe? I will prescribe prostaglandin. Latin of cross. Bad time, 9 p.m. Okay? Patient is controlled. Patient is? I will continue this drug. I will give visual feeds and patient is poor. Patient is? Poor. So I will give him a lot. 0.5% BD. Okay? Patient is controlled, I will continue. Take a visual field of six months or this. Yeah. Now we, I am giving a drug, it is not controlled. I will switch the drug. If I have given latinoprost, I may give dimetoprost. Okay? If I have given latinoprost, I may give some other primonidine. I may give dorsalomer. Okay. Or if suppose one drug is partially effective. Suppose normally I told you there is 30 percent decrease. Suppose there is of course only 10 or 15 percent decrease. You understand? Suppose 30 is IOP, now the 10 percent of 30, uh, 15 percent of 30 is how much? Almost 5 mm. Okay? So it is 25. Normally it should have reached to 20, but it has reached to 25. So I will add one more. Time. I will add. So if it is very or problem, If it is well tolerated, suppose it is well tolerated, then target IOP is reached, which I have said, target IOP, then you do visual field of this IOP repeat. If suppose target IOP is not reached, it is decreasing, but not, then you will add the second drug. Then you will add the second drug, like rimonidine or dorsolamide. Eh? Then if it is reached, then target IOP, other fibrin, suppose it is not reaching, then you will substitute the second drug. If you have done previously primonidine, now you will give dorsolamide or brinzolamide. And you will again see whether the IOP drop is there. Suppose there is no effect on the IOP, then you will switch the therapy. You will, you will give some other drug, second drug. Suppose these drugs are not tolerated or not effect on this, then you will uh, switch, switch monotherapy or you will do a laser. So the idea is start with prostaglandins or beta blockers. If they are effective, continue. If not, if partially effective, add the second drug. If they are not effective, then substitute. 
ठीक है दैट मैक्सिम हाउ मेनी ड्रग्स यू कैन गिव थ्री मैक्सिम हाउ मेनी ड्रग्स यू कैन गिव थ्री दैट्स कॉल्ड मैक्सिम टॉलरेटेड मेडिकल थेरेपी सम पीपल मे से फोर ऑल्सो बट थ्री इज द एक्सेप्टेड आई फील इफ ऑन थ्री पेशेंट इज नॉट कंट्रोल्ड देन यू हैव टू स्विच टू द लेजर थेरेपी और टू द सर्जरी the only thing is there now remains is the acute angle closure glaucoma attack how to treat it have you read acute angle closure glaucoma huh you have read then then you have
giving the board at instead of you. Now you will just go and take it. Okay? Then once you do this, you give many to or or extra zero point. Then the IOP will come down. IOP will then will start the pile of water. That is the first time that it will be. That is the first time that it will be. Pile of water will cook for every five minutes. Every five minutes. But initially, pyrocarbon, if you will give at the IOP of 60 or 70, pyrocarbon will not affect. Why? Because at high IOP, ice is 16. Ice is 16. So it should not be given in shield. So it should not be given in shield. Ice is a scheme. So you give manitol or you give estrogenomite. You can give in beta blocker. You can give a beta blocker. Then you start the pilot copy, you can start constricting, but the IOP should come down less than 40. That's it? 40. That is the line when you should start the pilot copy. IOP should be less than 40. Do you pilot copy at 40 IOP? It will not affect. It will not affect. Okay? So once you have given a start pilot copy every 5 minutes, then you can start constricting, the attack will regress. Okay, if now the body is clear, you do a iron You do a iron That will finish the attack. You understand? Iron dot is the mainstay of treatment. Iron dot means it? Mm -hmm. And you have to do one more thing. You don't have to do uh, iron dot in the same way also. You can do it in the opposite way also. Because the pilot is phenomenal. Pilot is not a unit that is phenomenal. So if you do a prophylactic iron adaptive with the other eye, then you will like iron dot you will to do that. That is the truth. So you do a bilateral iron dot. Suppose now the iron dot you are not able to do, you can wait. Here the corneal edema subsides. What other drugs you can give, you can give topical steroids also. You can give topical steroids in order to reduce the inflammation. In order to reduce the inflammation. If you this is one more method of doing, uh, obliterating the attack. That is you to take a soft stick, you press the central part of the cornea. Actors will be pushed, okay, and the attack can go. So that little pupil block can go by just an actors thrust. That is called mechanical pressure by a soft stick. The other procedures are there, like one more, it is not controlled with these. You can do a rapidectomy. You can do a rapidectomy. That is a surgical procedure. Or one more thing, you can remove the lens. Once you will remove the lens, I need to go back. That's for what? Lens extraction. Clear lens extraction. That's for clear lens extraction. I think that's all I have to say. Have you heard the class or not? Proxima Flagana.